It's the 5th of August 2017 and this is the Weekly Spread. Welcome back everybody to the Weekly Spread, our weekly show where we talk about stories that we found interesting during the week. I'm Jason and this is Rick. Hey guys, how are we? Been another busy week in the news in the world of pop culture, Rick. Certainly has. Definitely has. We've got a lot of stories to cover and I don't think we should muck around. And I reckon let's get started into movie, movie news. news. All right, we've had certainly some interesting news this week, Rick, in the world of movies. I think the first one I want to start on today is the Transformers spin off. Oh, okay. This okay, after five Transformers films helmed by Michael Bay. They've decided to now do a spin-off called Bumblebee. This is directed by Travis Knight. He directed a film called Kubo and the Two Strings, and he's now taking on this production. Now, honestly, at the end of the day, these films are bloody awful. All right, Transformers films. The first one was kind of good, was woeful. but the rest of them are shit house. And certainly, I'm very concerned which way they're going to go. But I've got a, there's a couple of interesting things about this yeah. this production. One is it's actually being set in 1987. Okay. So, and if you might see right behind me here, I have a picture of Bumblebee right there. So I'm assuming they're going to go with that design. I, I, here he's actually going to be a Volkswagen, so which is harkening back to the original design of the character. Um, and, and they've made some cast announcements as well, Rick. So who have they got in the cast? Well, you've got Hayley Stein, Seinfeld. Um, she joins the cast. She was in The Edge of Seventeen. She's also okay. a musician as well. Very, very talented young girl. She's a young girl. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. probably, oh, you know, in her early 20s, you know. Um, but she's very talented, so I think she's a good addition. The other addition is John Cena has been <laughs> cast. I know. Wow, okay. And, and mate, really, WWE. Yeah, I'm, I'm really concerned mostly about Hayley because you think about it, she's not only got to act against Bumblebee, which is a CGI character, she's also got to act against another actor that's not really there because we all know John Cena, you can't see him. <laughs> so, so, what's John Cena doing? What part is he playing? I assume he's, he's going to be or? the main cast. I haven't announced. Oh, okay, so he's not the voice of Bumblebee. But he's or another he's... shy. He'd be another he's actually... Wahlberg. He's probably the lead in it. And you know what? John Cena in some of the films I've seen, Rick, I actually enjoy. I think he's actually quite funny. He's had funny. a few little cameos and stuff. Yeah, he's yeah. quite funny. In, in, he's actually quite a funny guy. So he is. He is. Depending so, on I'll what be direction quite good I'll go. to see that one. Yeah. Moving on from the Transformers, which we hopefully will turn out to be a decent film, we move on to they've released the first image, Rick, of Domino. Yes. From Deadpool 2. Yes. A highly anticipated sequel. I think it's fair to say that anybody watching this show probably has the same amount of love for Deadpool as we do. Uh, I think it was a huge surprise and a, just a great comic book film. So, yeah, Domino now joins the cast and they've cast a, a Zazie Beats, I believe her name is. Zazie and Beats. as you can see down there, with, there's the photo of her. And what I love, they've got her laying in the same position as Deadpool was against that fire. When he did the... Uh, yeah, but the, instead yeah. of the, like, the bear rug, it's actually Deadpool yeah. she's laying on, yeah. which I thought was a nice, cute way to... Um, to introduce the character. So the other bit of the news that came out with um, a Deadpool disc two which we, was the first bit of news that got me a little bit worried. Yes. The director apparently was talking to one of the news outlets and stated that he believed that um, the relationship between the characters, uh, Deadpool and Cable, it would be very reminiscent of Rush Hour. And look, I like Rush Hour. Mm. It's an okay comedy action film. But I would have rather him say, oh, like a Riggs and Merca from Lethal Weapon or any other buddy cop kind of scenario because Rush Hour, while it works, it also, it's not great. So, but I think the director's intending they are going to have a kind of very uh, back and forth relationship. So, but that's two news. But overall, Deadpool. Can't Should wait to success. see the first footage of that yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, Rod Reynolds will have that comedic side of things, so he's he's got that down, that yeah. down pack. So, yeah. look, we'll just see how Josh Rowland goes with him, you know. So, hopefully it's not that sort of mm. relationship, but, yeah. We'll see what happens. Comes out. All right, moving on. Now, uh, Avatar. Oh. 2009 it's Avatar been a while. came out, mate. Wow. It's been a long time. Okay. They've been talking about sequels for this, well, very quickly after the original. 
mm. James Cameron announced that he did want to do some sequels. Um, and they were slated for 2015 originally. Right. But that's come and gone, obviously. Um, and now we've finally got some release dates for not one sequel, not two sequels, but four sequels, Rick. He's pumping them out. So okay. they've, they've, I know the script writers have been working on um, the Avatar sequels for a while now. Um, James Cameron promises to really open up this universe, take us to another worlds, other environments. So, look, I mean, I am a fan of Avatar. I did enjoy the movie. I think it, it really does, though, live and breathe on the screen, like in that 3D environment. It's uh, certainly wonderful to see in the movie theatre. But, yeah, now they're slated for the first release to come out in 2020. It's a long time. That's Either right. Way. When you get a sequel a year later in 2021, December, then you have a, t- a three-year break, Ooh. and then you get another sequel. Wow. And then a year later in 2024, and then you get another sequel after that in 2025. Okay. So what this says to me, Rick, if you were to read between the lines, I would say we'll get another re-release of Avatar in the cinemas in 2019, because that would be the 10-year anniversary. Yeah. And rumours are swirling around that he's actually re-rendering Avatar. So as much as it gorgeous as it looked on screen, it's I think everyone real. can agree it's a yeah. gorgeous-looking film. <laughs> Um, it's actually being uh, re-rendered to even more definition. Yeah. So I, yeah. I thought that was a kind of an interesting story, nonetheless. Um, now, the, another issue. We're going to move on to the world of oh. DC, mate. Yeah. And a couple of things here that, wow, DC, really concerning. Number one is the director of Shazam, Shazam. the new director, has slay, stated that his version of Shazam will be the most light-hearted film in the DECU. Ooh. This makes me really concerned, mate. I, and, you know, before I comment on that, I'm going to get, go forward as well. The DC film slate, as is far, they've already rolled on Aquaman, right? That's yeah. been done. They've announced Woman Woman 2, right? Justice this League is comes out, currently yeah. reshooting and, and is out in November. We've got announcements that Batgirl will be coming, but because Joss Whedon has taken over... Uh, Justice League for Zack Snyder. I would say we won't see Batgirl for a couple of years. Um, sequels to Suicide Squad and as well as Gotham mm-hmm. City Sirens. So they've got a slate out there, and now they're adding Shazam, which they're claiming is going to be a light-hearted film. Now, interesting enough, Rick, I had, a, I had a discussion with my son the other night about Marvel DC. Um, and, and one of the things that came up, and I think one of the things that we discovered is where DC really, if I was running D, if I was running DC, and there's no way on God's green earth anyone would give me that amount of money, but it, hypothetically speaking, in this bizarre universe, I'm running the DC, the DECU, this is what I would have done. I would have made an, an anthology series, meaning I would have actually fully adapted the classic DC comic books rather than being a, a cinematic universe. So imagine this. You have your Marvel overall cinematic universe, and that's brilliant. But DC go a different route. So they go, all right, we're just going to adapt The Dark Knight Returns. That's a standalone film. And then we're going to do Crisis on Infinite Earths. And then we're going to do The Flashpoint Paradox. We're going to take the actual comic books and adapt them to the screen as they did Watchmen. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because, you know, at the end of the day, that's a long way of saying, I'm really concerned about the uh, DC, the the DECU. See, it doesn't even sound right to say that. Um... They, I don't know what they're doing there, mate. Well, they're, they... They're shifting tones completely now. They're making comedy. I mean, mm. mate, you remember Man of Steel? Yeah, it was right? a movie. Great, Great movie. movie, right? Fantastic but movie. But a very serious movie. And then you see trailers for Justice League and the Flash is going, oh, that's rude. And he's, and he's trying dads. to make... Yeah, yeah. It's a complete shift in tone and it doesn't work for me. It really doesn't. But anyway... You know what? Let's not worry about that. But we don't know how the other movie is going to go as well. Well, you know we don't. I mean? We don't. I think the only <sighs> same grace here, Rick, is maybe with the announcement of the Flash movie, which I didn't announce then, which is called Flashpoint, indicates that they may be trying to do the Flashpoint paradox storyline from the comic books, which is a way for them to completely reset the universe. Well, And they may be using that film as the catalyst to doing that. So... It'll be interesting, lots more news to come from, uh, from the DECU. Uh, D-E-C-U. All right? Didn't sound right. No, didn't it doesn't, right. doesn't flow, doesn't does it? No. All right, moving on to my last story I've got about movie news this week, Rick, is The Dark Tower. Nice. The Dark Tower is obviously being released globally this week. Yep. Um, I believe it's being released here this upcoming week. It's already released here this week. Mate, the buzz is not good. 
Not good. Not good. This film, apparently, according to critics have seen it, is a complete and utter mitigated disaster. Um, it's currently sitting at eighteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, that's low. And eight to, and uh, if you're at eighteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes, that means you know, out yeah. of a hundred reviewers, only eighteen thought it was a good movie. So there's certainly some issues there. I mean, obviously, films are subjective. You should always go into a film and make your own mind up in a film. That's right. But this is not a good sign. No. So apparently they're really angry at the fans that have seen it have how they've mishandled the property. Have you ever seen the books? I've never read them, Rick. You know? Stephen King. Well, but they're like yeah. that. You know, they're, they're massive. They're just thick. You know, just... giant, giant texts. And uh, at the end of the day, this film is a ninety-minute, ninety-five-minute production. So they've apparently really just glossed over a lot of things. So. Um, honestly, I think this would have been better uh, source material for something like Netflix. Yep. But as late as this morning, Rick, I did read that they, they are thinking of now extending the movie into a TV series. That'd be better. So we'll see what happens there. So, mate, that's all that really caught my eye this week in, mus- in the movies. Awesome. I think it's now to move on to streaming. streaming. All right, guys. Let's get into it. Uh, not much really that's been happening much in the streaming world. Uh, I guess a few things that have caught my eye. Uh, let's start off with Stan. Obviously, let's just reiterate that it is Stan is based in Australia. So this is for the Australian guys. Um, but also these shows are streaming uh, obviously everywhere else. So the one that's come up, season two of Dice. Now, Dice, who I'm actually talking about, is Andrew Dice Clay. So if you're a fan of the 80s, uh, Andrew Dice Clay was a big comedic... Yeah. The Adventures uh, of Ford Fairlane. Yeah, Adventures of Ford Fairlane, if you've seen that movie. Uh, Andrew Dice Clay has made a bit of a comeback, sort of, trying to get back into it, trying to get his name back into it. Um, I've watched the first season. It's, it is a very short season. Um, it's only a half-hour show. So basically, it's 25 years after taking the entertainment world by storm. Andrew Dice Clay is eager to reclaim his comedy throne. Oh, so um, isn't it isn't it like a half kind of biographical sort of kind yeah, of... sort of like a bit of half his real life and yeah, yeah, and okay. Bit, yeah. okay. So it's got some other you know good uh, famous people in it, uh, good cameos. So uh, that airs uh, the same day as the US, and that starts uh, August six, which right. is uh, this weekend. Okay. So I'm gonna, I might have to check fan, that out. It's yeah, it's not too bad on Stan. Um, let's move on to Foxtel. Not much happening in the world of Foxtel. Obviously, the big shows are obviously still running hard, which is obviously Game of Thrones. Um, but another thing that really caught my eye is if you guys miss Game of Thrones, there is actually a show called uh, Thronecast uh, Season 7. So what that is, is it's aired at 10.30 uh, on Tuesdays on the Showcase channel. And basically, it's just a, a show that uh, Sue Perkins and Jamie East uh, and a panel of guests, they just talk about the season and the episode that just oh, aired. Okay, okay, kind of like the Talking Dead. Yeah, it's all like the Talking Dead yeah, they did, yeah. so they air the episode and then they have that. Yeah. So that's probably something that, you know, you might want to, if just in and case mate, you've missed. And Game of Thrones is one of those shows, mate. You cannot go, I cannot go into work on a, yeah. a Tuesday and without, you know, that being talked about Someone saying something. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I watch it just so I don't get spoiled, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, spoilers everywhere, everyone's talking about it. Mm. But just in case you do miss, that's on Foxtel. Remember, Foxtel is Australia as well. Excellent. Moving on to Netflix. Now, big news in Netflix. This is huge for us. Um, season three of Rick and Morty. Now, Pickle if you Rick. are not a Rick and Morty fan, if you have a look just up here, let me get some more there. Uh, that's Rick and Morty. Um, so there was a little bit of controversy with season three of releasing it. So what uh, Netflix have done there, now this is Netflix Australia, mm. Netflix UK and uh, the US have already got the full season, uh, but here in Australia what they're doing is they're going to be releasing it weekly. So at okay. the moment, the third, right. epi- the first episode of season three is mm. on Netflix yep. at the moment. Okay, so to give you uh, uh, an idea, so the next episode, season two, uh, sorry, episode two will be on the uh, six. Which is to, which Sunday? Is, which is Sunday. And then the following one will be on the 13th, ah. and then the 20th, and then the 27th. I think that puts us about a week behind, but that's but, really yeah. great news, Rick, that we are going to get Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. That consistently yeah. through Netflix now. Yeah, that's which is news. good. 
Big, great show. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, basically in a nutshell, it is a, a, a grandfather and his, his grandson. The grandfather is like a, a genius um, and, and they go on crazy adventures uh, in different universes and dimensions. Well, it, it's and pretty it's obvious crazy. when you see the first yeah. episode that yeah. it is a kind of a takeoff or a homage to um, uh, Back to the Future. Because yeah. Rick is basically Doc. <laughs> doc. A yeah. really twisted Doc. But and Morty's a real meek yeah. kind of version of Marty. Yeah, but those who don't have obviously Netflix, it is on the uh, it's on the Adult Swim channel, so as well. Yeah, so right. The little the controversy that was happening was there were some rumours going around that the two uh, creators of Rick and Morty had yeah. some arguments and discussions and uh, about when they were going to release it, but that's yeah. all cleared now. So they're the great. Right. You know, I think out. sometimes having a bit of friction in that creative environment sometimes drives yeah. it to be a better product and. Uh, yeah. Um, a Rick and Morty, as a uh, pure animation show itself, is it's, yeah. It's it's a, it's great. It's just great it's show. one of those shows that really awesome show. not only keeps you highly entertained, but actually makes you think sometimes on a deeper level. Oh, it is. Well, it's very yeah, mind, yeah. But makes you think on a deeper level than you normally would, which is good. Mm, and yeah. then the only other thing that popped up, which I thought was pretty cool, something different for the kids maybe as well, which mm. is pretty good. Uh, Penn and Teller, Fool Us, uh, oh, season one. Is this the magic show? Yeah, that they so this do? is this is the magic show. So basically, if you don't know who Penn and Teller are, they're uh, very famous uh, magicians and illusionists, and they've been around for oh, geez, long time, 30, 40 odd years. Um, so basically, it's just uh, um, they're the, the the judges, and then there's a whole heap of uh, magicians that come on and try and fool. Uh, yeah, Penn and Teller to see I've actually seen it. a few episodes. Yeah, and it's actually. It's yeah. really great to see, you know. I mean, you don't, I don't see a lot of magic, so it's good to see some of the uh, some of the illusions that are out there. Yeah, the so they've got the full season, which is on Netflix at the moment. So uh, yeah. yeah, go definitely check that out, Pen and Telephone. Right, fantastic That's it for streaming. Brilliant, excellent. No I think it's time to talk gaming, gaming news. All right, okay, gaming. Well, September is looking like a big month for retro gamers out there. Nintendo is obviously releasing its new SNES mini console, um, and now Sega Genesis has announced that they'll be releasing a flashback console in September, and as well as the Atari box. So wow. at the moment, the big fad going is grabbing the old console, shrinking them down, packing them full of games and re-releasing them. Why not? Good idea. So if you're a real hardcore retro gamer, it's for you. But if you're not, if you're it's just not. somebody who thinks... Oh, I'll get this console because it's cool. Rethink it, because look, what's going to happen is you're going to go and buy these consoles. You're going to play it for two hours, and then it'll just sit there and do nothing for the rest of the time. Look, it's a great idea. Me, a great idea. Me personally, I'm waiting for like the mini version of the Nintendo 64 or the mini version of the PlayStation 2, because then I think you've really got something there. But if you're an old school gamer and you love that kind of playing, you know, the old ver version of Mario or whatever. Or, you know, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, or even some of those old school blocky Atari games. Um, yep, this is there. for you, and they're going to be out, and I'm pretty sure they're at uh, under 200 bucks. So, oh, that's all right. enjoy. Yeah, it's, not, it's a good deal. Good it's price. Good deal. Yeah. Okay, moving on now to something a bit more modern that's set in the past, and that is the World War I shooter Battlefield 1 has been a phenomenon for EA games. Um, and now as selling over 21, we're actually having 21 million players in this online. Jeez. 21 million players. Online. Um, as of the end of June, that were playing online on this game. Jeez, get a lot and, of people. Uh, I mean, only a few months back, they had 19 million, and that was kind of big news. So, oh, wow. So even over, this game has now been out since last year, and they're obviously... Um, we'll be moving on to another Battlefield game, which I'm not sure if there's been something released yet formally. But either way, the growth at this time shows that the game has a lot of life in it. So, you know why I think people are liking this game over the other shooters? It's because it's taken it back to a more simpler time. Yep. So what happens you get in some of these uh, first-person shooters, the weaponry becomes so outrageous, so, you know, so scoped, and so easy to kill people and... It just, if you take it back to a simpler time where you had rifles, you had bayonets, you had things like that, it actually makes the gaming experience more, a little bit more, more intensified. Yeah. So, yeah, look, Battlefield 1, if you haven't actually got a hold of it, certainly get a hold of it. Now, the other big controversy in the world of gaming this week came out just news only yesterday, Rick. 
after a game called House Party has been banned by Steam. Now, House Party house is a party. game about a, a lot of drunk women in a house <laughs> with a lot of frustrated, angry boyfriends. Wow. It's basically a sex simulator game. So basically what it happens is that you've got to coerce these ladies up to the bedroom, get them to take their clothes off, and then by smashing either the eye key or another key to engage in so, sexual activity. Now, it, it sold 35,000 copies in its first month. Right? So there's a lot of perverts out there. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, I, my biggest issue with this, Rick, and why I think it has to be pulled is because it was accessible to everybody, which many children. Oh, so there was no age limit on it. As far as I'm aware, and I could be, yeah. I, I could be for that, but my indication was it was available to everyone. So Steam has done the responsible thing. They've pulled the title back and obviously bring down some of the um, explicit sex scenes. So, wow. So there so you go. Like, so basically it's a modern version of uh, Leisure Shoot Larry. Yes. <laughs> so pretty much. Yes, Just, excellent reference there, Rick. Yeah. Yes, Leisure Shoot Larry back Mine in a big bad way. Day. It's my game but, reference. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. But wow. mate, there's not more news I want to talk about in gaming this week, so I think we've got to move on to music. All right, guys. Uh, let's get into to music. Uh, now, this, this came across, and it's been around the media a lot, and it's just... Fucking disgusting when I saw Ooh. this. I'm absolutely ropeable about this, and I think you guys will be too. Uh -huh. You're probably all aware, two weeks ago, Chester Bennington passed away, um, tragically, um, and ac across the world, everyone has been pouring in with their tweets and mm. everything, and just all good vibes and everything else. Now, uh, recently, they had the funeral of, of Chester, Yeah, and I know they did some public... Um, Funerals as well, and obviously there was some a memorial, lines, memorial, and so forth. Um, so one piece of shit of a guy uh, decided to uh, place some items from that memorial on eBay oh, and yeah. sell them. So he's got like a wristband, he's got like a, a laminated, um, uh, I guess, um, what are they called? A um, well, it's kind of like a, not a, a running sheet. It's kind yeah. of like a, a layout of what the layout of what's going to be happening and yeah. so forth, and some other bits and pieces. Now he actually put it on eBay, mm. and he actually got up to the bidding. Actually, got up. Now this is US dollars, so it actually got up to fifty thousand oh. dollars, which is equivalent to sixty five thousand dollars in in uh, wow, Australian wee. dollars. So the thing that shits me is that's just really, really disgusting as a human being, but also the people who are actually bidding for it as well. That's exactly what I'm thinking, Rick. Come who's on, guys. Worse this situation? That's right. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, let's focus on the actual, uh, you know, trying to um, help people who are in that situation of, of, you know, suicide or being depressed or something like that. Mm. Let's go down that channel, not fucking, you know, sell no. merchandise and try and get rich quick. So, absolutely. Uh, disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. But eBay had pulled that and it's off eBay. So good on you, eBay, wow. for doing that. Um, now, we've got some uh, news about the Muse, if anyone is a Muse fan. I we've am. got some tour dates that are coming up. Um, but unfortunately, if you are, uh, don't live in Sydney and Melbourne, everyone else don't get to see the Muse. So this is their first uh, Australian tour. Um, so they'll be visiting Sydney and Melbourne. Um, so the dates, uh, pre-sale begins on the 12th, mm. uh, sorry, on the 8th of August at 12pm. Okay, midday. Australian Eastern Standard yep. Time on a Tuesday. Uh, and then the general public will go 12 p.m. local time on Friday the 11th of August. Wow. So the dates for the actual uh, concert, you're looking at uh, 16th of December in Sydney and then 18th uh, of December in Melbourne. So they're wow, doing the, the two these, shows. these shows are going to sell out like that. They'll right? sell out quick. So yeah. if you're a Muse fan, I definitely would get onto it pretty much straight away. Uh, like with anything, with any big bands that come through, anything like that, you've just got to get on the tickets yeah. pretty quick. Um, and what are these shows? Are they are they eighteen only? Are they no no? This show yeah, normally they are eighteen only. Yeah. Uh, but this time they're going to go all ages, so they're oh, covering fantastic. for all ages. So there's going to be a lot of young guys there as well, a lot of yeah, young kids. Yeah. And that. So they're going for which is really good, which I think is is fantastic. Yeah. So uh, yeah, get on those dates um, and the tickets through Ticket Tech. So if you're in Australia, Ticket Tech. Beautiful, and, and that's it for music. That's pretty music much it for music. Um, yeah, great. We appreciate well, everything. Fantastic, guys. Well, that's been it for this week for the weekly spread. Um, yeah, thanks for, for watching. And Rick, what do the people need to do if they want to 
talk about what we've talked about this so week. So if you like what you saw, um, please obviously subscribe to all our channels and obviously the YouTube channel and press subscribe. Um, follow us on all our social media sites. We've always got up-to-date uh, information and also the stuff that we've spoken about is actually on the site as yeah, well. Yeah, guys, if you're not so on you Facebook, to... get on the get on pop, it. pop Culture Facebook, uh, uh, Pop Culture Spread Facebook feed. It is the most informative it. feed you'll ever come across when it comes to pop culture. So, yeah, get on it, guys, and we appreciate it. So thanks very much for watching. Excellent, guys, and we'll see you next week.